Well, plant hunters found some of our most interesting plants, but they also found some of the most dangerous too. This is the poisonous garden, and it explores the darker side Now, this is the carnivorous area, and these are Saracenias, also known as pitcher plants. They don't take their nutrients from the soil, they ingest little insects. And these guys are having a field day. I think they call it the cycle of life. This is the most poisonous part of the garden, and this is common hogweed, and it's a member of the carrot family, but this one ain't gonna help you see in the dark, no. This, if you get some of the sap on your skin, is gonna cause a real irritant. But you wanna watch out for its big brother, giant hogweed, that will leave you with scars. While some plants go for toxins, these go for a much more physical approach. Meet Agave Salmiana Ferox, Ferox meaning ferocious, and you can see why nothing is going to eat this, is it? All right, I get the point. This is the apothecary area with plants that are said to have medicinal uses. Now, this is the ginkgo biloba. It's one of my favourite trees, but the seeds are toxic. Now, I didn't know that. It just goes to show you really need to know what you're doing. So Liz, you're a toxicologist and an expert on the world's most dangerous plants. Yes, so just how poisonous are some of these plants? So we've got Aconitum, the very tall one there. If you ate it, it could be fatal if you ate enough of it. The foxgloves? I mean, we all grow foxgloves, yeah. don't we? All parts contain a toxin that will affect the heart. And I guess children eating berries is a huge concern for parents. Yes, yes it is, but a lot of them are non-toxic, say a pyrocantha or a cotoneaster or a sorbus, something like that. Okay, but also there's medicinal plants in this garden which yes. are okay in small doses, but then there's a sort of threshold that you shouldn't go over. How is anybody going to know what that threshold is? Best not to try and find the threshold, in my opinion. Leave that to the experts. You have to be a qualified herbalist to use those. Well, I guess we just need to respect them and know what they are. Yes, good advice is to identify the plants in your garden, particularly if you've got young children. Um, you might need to remove it. Say you've got aconitum, uh, you could decide you don't want to grow it while your child's young, or you can put it at the back of the border. If you have a bush that produces fruit, then you can trim it after it's flowered to stop it fruiting for a few years. Well, thanks for this expert advice. Thank you very much.